So I'm going to try this again with a strainer and I wanted to work with some oranges and yellows because I need those for my cabochons which I'm also going to show you later with my drips. I'm going to dip my cabochons in the dips. But I need some reds. I don't have any reds, oranges, or yellows. So I'm going to use those for the flower today. Hopefully it turns out looking like a flower. Um, I do have a base coat down. This is Acrylic Flow, Artist Loft Acrylic Flow White. And I did not pop the bubbles, so I'm going to do that. My cat Roxy is here to watch me do what I'm doing. She probably shouldn't be around all these fumes. But I can't open the window because it's too cold here right now. All right, so um, this is my strainer I'm going to use. And I'm just going to set it down in the middle. And we're going to hope for the best. My colors today are Artist Loft Naples Yellow. This is Apple Barrel Sunny Yellow, a little bit brighter yellow. Arteza Gold. Artist Loft Metallic Orange. And this one doesn't have a label, but it is Arteza Crimson. And then I'm also going to put some Artist, um, Artist Loft White Flow acrylic in there also. Um, just to break up the yellows and yellows and oranges and reds. So I really want this flower to be more red. I'm going for a Valentine's Day theme, uh, but I do have three yellows, so I'm going to have to be careful with that. But I'm going to be using the red a lot more than anything else. So I am going to start with the red. And I'm just going to put it in the cover up the bottom with the red. All my acrylics are mixed one to one with the Elmer's glue wall. And then uh, that's so I double double that and then I double the double the rest of it with Floetrol. So if I have two ounces, let's say 2.5 ounces of paint 2.5 ounces of Elmer's glue all. I mix that together and then I add five ounces of Floetrol. And I try not to put any water. Sometimes they're a little bit thicker. So I'll add the 90% water and 10% uh, Floetrol like Gina does. Just to thin them out. Okay, so we've got some red going. So let's get some orange in there. This is a metallic orange. It's really pretty. It's, it's by Artist Loft. I really love it. Okay, then I'm going to go with the sunny yellow. And a little bit of white. I think this is really going to start flowing once I get it up. I'm going to go with the red again. I wanted to make a big flower. That's why I wanted to start off with do the, um, the round canvas. Okay, I want to go in with some gold. This is coming out, but it's coming out very slowly. My paints are a little thick, but I'm just going to bear with it and give it time to do its thing. Have some patience, which I'm not very good at. Okay. I'm going to add some of the Naples yellow.
last time I did this, I had a little bit of trouble on the sides with it coming in. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. I think it's because the sides don't, when I'm going around, I'm not getting the sides. So I'm going to give those just a little bit extra paint there. And yeah, that looks like it took care of the problem. I know you guys can't see what's coming out yet, but oh, you're starting to see it. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of white in there. And I'm okay with the, the white and the red making pink. And it looks like it's going to be a red flower. It's coming out pretty red, which is good. That's what I wanted. Put some more red in. Make sure I get those sides. I may run out of this red, and I'm going to be sad. I'm going to have to order more. It's Arteza, and I just love it. The Arteza Crimson. It's more of a true red. It's not an orangey red or a blue red. It's just a true red. I think it's a little cold in here today, and that's why my paints are moving a little bit slower. Let's go back with the sunny. No, let's go back with the orange. Metallic orange. and then the sunny yellow. I'm hoping I get some really pretty, lost my train of thought, some really pretty drips from this because I'm gonna, I wanna dip my cabochons from my snap jewelry that I get from Jenny, Jenny Color on Etsy. She, uh, turned us on to this snap jewelry and I just love it but I need uh, some more range I've got a lot of blues and purples and aquas but I don't have any reds and yellows so let me get some more of those okay we're coming out slowly we get a lot of paint in the middle I want it to at least come out to, you know, to about here. I want to have maybe two inches left on the sides. I don't know if I'm gonna get there, but. This is gonna be a psychedelic flower, that's for sure. I try to stick with the, when I pick my colors, going back to the color wheel, I try to stick with harmonious colors. Um, they're called analogous colors and they're the colors on the color wheel that are right next to each other. So if you if you choose your colors, you get your color wheel out and you choose your colors that are right next to each other, they're usually going to be your best colors. Um, so red, yellow, and orange, those are really good and stick with those tones. Really good colors to use. Blues, greens, purples, those are that's another good color combination. And you don't have to worry about mud with those colors. You won't get mud. The only time you get mud is if you try to mix two complementary colors, which are the colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So blue and orange are complementary colors, yellow and purple, and then red and green. And those colors look good together. They, they bounce off each other if you can get them down without them mixing. Uh, I found with the flow paintings, uh, the pores, you don't have as much color muddying as you do with other art things that you do when you mix colors. I've seen a lot of people use blue, blue and orange together and it comes out beautiful. But there's always that risk that there's going to be one part of your painting that has mud. 
So it's just a good rule to, to go by. If you are going to use the complementary colors together, it's a good idea to put either white or black in between the layers. So you have kind of a buffer. Okay. I think I'm going to go one more round with the colors and then I think we're going to be done because I'm seeing some holes poking through here. So that means the color has is getting out. And I like I've been going around this outer circle and I like how that's coming out now. So I'm going to go with one more round of red. And then another round of the orange. Let's do some maples yellow. Let's give some white. Some of the gold. And we'll let that come out. And then I think we're ready to lift. The thing I like about the round, especially with flowers, is when you go to tilt, you don't have any corners. It just flows off really nicely. And you get nice edges, and I'm really loving these round canvases. I think I'm out now, though, so <laughs> I think I have to go to something else. I have a whole stack of rectangle canvases over there I need to use. I'm going to go ahead and lift. I know I have a lot of paint in that center, so. But I think it'll come out pretty cool. And I'm going to get my hand underneath the strainer when you go to lift so that you don't get drips. Ooh, that middle's pretty. I could dip some cabochons in that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, yeah, dripped right over my painting. Don't do that. Well, that looks pretty cool. I'm excited. I do not have any silicone in any of these paints. When I do my flowers, I like them to be, I like them to have hard edges. I don't like them to be wobbly. So I do not put silicone in anything. If I'm doing a straight pour or a dirty pour, or I just want it to be organic and abstract, then I will go ahead and put, um, ooh, that row of bubbles was really pretty. Thoughts there. Um, then I will go ahead and put silicone. But of course, you're going to get some cells because you, I'm using Floetrol. So you're always going to get some cells. All right. I really like this. It looks kind of like a sunflower. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try and stretch it out without losing the flower, so I'm just going to go slow. And then you definitely want to uh, always come back to the center. And go out to just the edge and then come back. I love that center on that, so pretty. And I'm gonna go out to the other edge. I've got some cells popping up in the middle there in the oranges, looks really pretty too. Okay, back to the center. You can see how much paint is on this canvas. 
I'm going to go out to this edge. I'm going out, but I'm kind of tilting at the same time because I want to bring it out to that those round edges. Get that paint back to where you're trying to go to. If that makes sense, you can see where the, the heaviness of the paint is or the puddle of the paint. Takes you out to the edges. Let's come back. Okay, we're gonna go down to the bottom. And again, I'm going to tilt slightly so we can get these edges. It's okay if it goes over a little bit. And back to the center. It's really opened up that center too. Okay, I'm going to go over. I want to hit that upper right corner up there. back okay and then down to this last area and then I have to decide if I want to get rid of the white on the other side over there Ooh, that's a big sunflower very cool. I do think I want to get rid of the white on the edges, so, or at least let it dip over. So I'm going to go back and hit those areas. My guide is kind of the yellow petals that are out there because I'm trying to keep those on the canvas so when I see those getting close then I bring them bring it back so we're gonna go over to this side just grab that little bit of white there move it a little bit okay and then back. There's still some areas that have white edges and a little bit of that is okay because there was white in this but I don't want a lot of it, so I want to make sure I get rid of those. There we go. Okay. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm very happy with it. I think I'm going to pop some more bubbles. It's definitely an abstract flower. But I think very pretty. And now I have to decide if I want to pull in that middle at all. Let's pop some more bubbles because I see some a lot. Bye bye bubbles. And I'm happy with how the colors came out. I uh, I wanted red, so 
I like that strainer. I'm going to let this settle a little bit. See what it looks like on the camera. That always helps. Yeah. I'm going to pull these, this center in a little bit. I like these white dots around, so I'm going to try not to disturb those. So I'm just going to go where the lines are and pull it in to the center a little bit. I think it just organizes your center a little bit more to do that. But you need to be really careful about where you pull in because you may mess up something that's really pretty. And I like soft, puffy, roundy corners on my flowers. That's just my style. So I don't like to pull out and make pointy, pointy things. Those are pretty. I like them when other people do them, but I just prefer not to. Make sure uh, when you're pulling in that you wipe your toothpick every time. Now see this part right here? That's really pretty, so I, I don't want to mess that up too much, so I'm going to be really careful when I pull that one in. I really like how those reds are coming in. And see how beautiful the colors are? There is no mud, and that's because you're using analogous colors or harmonious colors together. You will not get mud, ever. So it's just a good rule to try and go by, especially if you're a beginner. Okay. I like that. I want to swirl this white in here a little bit. Swirl it out. Give it a little pretty center. And it's a little bit off center. It's not dead center in the middle of the canvas, which I always like too. I think it makes it look better. So there you go. That's our uh, strainer flower for today. I'm very happy with her. I think she might need some glitter, but I will uh, give you a close up here. You can see, hopefully that's not blurry. You can see the center. Oh, I just love those petals, how they are outer petals like that. They really look like a sunflower. Okay, I'm going to set that aside to dry. And I will decide later if she's going to get glitter or not. I'm kind of into the glitter right now. I have some diamond dust. Okay. I didn't get a whole lot of red and yellow. So I'm going to add some to the piddle pad because I really want red and yellow for my cabochons. Red, yellow, orange. And I'm going to lace over these with some gold, I think, because that always gives a good contrast. Okay, and then we're going to go just take a palette knife and swipe. I have some, there's still some paint in that strainer too. I'm just going to let that mix up a little bit and see what I end up with. Um, there are some white, whites and reds around here that I like. So this is, uh, I learned this from Mickey Art. Uh, she's a genius. So she takes a popsicle stick and you put some blue tack on it. Or what else do they call that? It's a 
can't remember. Anyhow, it's the stuff you stick posters to the wall with. And so we just call it blue tack. There's another name for it, but. So you put that on the end of a stick, all right? And then here is your cabochons. And let me show you real quick some of them I've already done so you can get an idea. So these are ones I've already finished. And I, like I said, I have a lot of blues and purples, but you can see how pretty. And the cool thing about dipping your cabochons to make jewelry out of is you kind of cut out a couple steps because with dipping them, you don't have to glue them to your skins or, or your photo paper, whatever you're using, and then wait for them to dry and then cut them out. And you don't have to do that. You skip a whole bunch of steps. So, and I've learned a couple things by doing this. I'm still kind of a beginner with it, but... Um, pop some bubbles here and see if I can get some more. Yeah, we've got some cool stuff coming up in the red, yellow, and orange mix here. Uh, so what you want to do is your cabochon is flat on one side and domed on the other side. So you just want to stick that to the popsicle stick with the uh, blue tack on it. You don't want to push up, put it on there hard. That's one thing I've found because when you go to take these off, they're very slippery and you have to pull them off and then you have to set them down to dry. Okay, so just very lightly on your blue tack. Find a pretty, pretty area that you like. I find that um, stripes are good to give you some contrast. I'm kind of liking this area over here. So all you're gonna do is just dip it down in the paint and lift it up. And then you get your little cabochon. Make sure you hold real tight and pull gently when you come off. And then you can see, you just get your, your dip is on there. So, and then I just set them down all over my pedal pad to dry. And then when they're dry, you just clean off the front and then you can glue them in to your setting. And the, the snap jewelry has a metal piece that looks like this. As I drop it, yeah, it looks like this. It's got the little male end, and then it snaps into the jewelry, which I should have had out. But let me find one. So here's one of her pieces that we've got here. Okay, and then this cabochon snap just comes right out. So you do your, your piece, your cabochon, dip it, let it dry, clean it, and then you glue it into your base. I use the E6000 to glue it in there. And then once it's glued in, you just snap it on into your jewelry. And she has a whole bunch of different settings, different um, jewelry items, bracelets, rings, earrings, and you can snap them in and out. Her name is Jenny Post, and her website is uh, Jenny Color on Etsy. If you go to uh, Christina Welch's, one of her videos, recent videos, she has a code there for you and um, a link to Jenny's site. And you can go right there. And she does a lot of discount. I think she's doing a discount right now. So um, you can get that coupon code right through Christina's videos. She did a video on making this jewelry too. Okay, see how I'm just wiggling? Just wiggle carefully. Oh, messed that one up. That's what I mean. You have to, don't stick them on so hard that they don't want to come off. Just lightly on there. Dip them in. You can hit them with the torch if you want. And it, it's really cool when you start dipping. You can see down here. I don't know if you can see that, but it starts making... Uh, almost like balloon flowers. 
So then you can go and pick those up and they're, they're really pretty. So I'm gonna go right back in where I was because I need another one of those because I dropped it. Hopefully, let's not drop this one. Okay. So you get the idea. This just makes things a lot easier. It's a little bit of, uh, get that line right there, a little bit of practice. And you definitely have to be patient with it. But they do come out really nice. I have some really pretty ones that I did the other day with the blue and purple one. And so now I'll have some red, yellow, and orange, and I can uh, finish making all my jewelry. I'm going to do one in here because look at how pretty this is. So let's get some of that going on because there's some gold in there. Hopefully I covered the whole thing. I did. Oh yeah, that one came out really pretty. I'm going to do some more of those. Okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and the little jewelry demonstration. Hopefully you understood all that. Um, if not, go to Christina Welch's video and she does a whole video on uh, the jewelry also gives you a little bit better idea. And that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.